All right, everybody, how are you doing tonight? I've moderated a lot of panels here at, at uh, Comic-Con over the years, and frequently you find yourself in the position of selling something or hyping something that hasn't come out. When I was contacted about this panel, the joy of it is that you guys know exactly why you're here tonight. You already know that you like Kung Fury, and I know I like Kung Fury, and so this is nothing but pleasure. So thank you so much for being here. It is exciting. I want to bring out the guy that first contacted me about this, Seth Graham Smith. You know Seth from uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Killer, uh, but Hunter. Vampire Hunter. Um, he is also, uh, of course, um, part of presenting this for us today, but we have a big panel, so let's continue to bring people out, including the cast, starting with Yorma Tacone, who played Hitler. We also have a Lenny Young here who is Barbariana. I got a little giddy when I met this guy backstage. Andreas Colling is here. Welcome Thor to the stage. We also have, of course, the one. Oh. I'm not cutting off the gun show. Okay. All right. And then uh, we would like to bring none other than Hacker Man, Leopold Nilsson, to the stage. There's a technical difficulty with Ackerman. Uh, we are going to bring uh, the writer, director, and Kung Fury himself to the stage, David Sandberg. And now, uh, I know many of you uh, were excited to possibly see the Hoff here, but uh, he is unfortunately recovering from emergency knee surgery and so cannot join us. So let's wish the Hoff a quick and speedy recovery. All right. And, okay. and now, um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is this is. One of the things at Comic-Con that we find over and over is that projects here are driven by passion. Passion from fans, passion from the people who make them. When you look at Kung Fury, it is clearly the work of somebody who has digested and loves and lives and breathes pop culture in a very specific way. Uh, so I'd love to hear something about where this began for you and how all of this ended up in one insane and wonderful package. Oh, uh, well, it started like three years ago. I was at the time very like into uh, 80s music. So I was listening to a lot of like Mitch Murder. And uh, yeah, he's great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, you know, just listening to his music got all these like images in my head. And I was, you know, I felt like for a long time, I wanted to do something with dinosaurs, robots, and cops. And I felt like the 80s decade was perfect for that. And Mitch inspired me with his music. So uh, I wrote the script for Kung Fury, and no one really understood what I was doing. <laughs> uh, but I was like, you know, I was determined to do it. Uh, I worked on it for like two years. 
then I did the Kickstarter, and that was such a relief for me because, you know, finally I could show people what, you know, I had in mind, and it was such an incredible success, like way over any expectation that I had. So, yeah, it was incredible. I think this is one of those cases where as soon as you see it, you get it. And I would imagine describing this to somebody must be incredibly hard. Um, yeah. So when the Kickstarter went up, uh, in addition to just the reaction from people that were funding, what other reactions did you get? Did you get responses from people who wanted to help or who wanted to be in some way part of it? Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, things changed. Um, at the time, you know, I had tried to raise money for it uh, in different ways. Uh, and there's some institutions, I won't name the <laughs> name, but I had searched money at different institutions and they were like, this is stupid, no. <laughs> uh, but then after the Kickstarter, they were like, yeah, totally, Hitler's great, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, things changed in a very big way. And uh, Disney, you guys, it was Disney. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. and. That was one of the great moments too, like when I emailed Yorma, uh, because we met in LA, and you were like, hey, we can help you out if you want, and we were like. Well, I, I gave you 200 bucks. <laughs> 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 the, the Lonely Island gave you 200 bucks. <laughs> what did he say to you though? You told me back there, you said, uh, David said, don't take this the wrong way, but. Well, no, it was, it was, uh, I mean, I, I literally just was a fan of, uh, like, I mean, the, the, the trailer was so great and it was so right up my alley that I just wanted to give him 200 bucks. I hope, <laughs> I, I think we should have given more, honestly. Um, and then uh, and then we wrote you an email and then he wrote me back quite a ways uh, after that because he had a lot of emails, I think, at that point. And then, uh, and then two months later, he, he called me and he was like, hey, don't take this the wrong way, but uh, I think he might make a really good Hitler. <laughs> Uh, I was like, no oh yeah, like whenever you want me, I'll, yeah. So that's how that happened. You did though. Yeah. You did a great Hitler. Oh, thanks, yeah, thank you. totally. <laughs> well, thanks guys. Well, it, it's got so much anger in me. It's such a specific comic voice that this thing has, and it's, and it's not played winking at you the entire time. It's played in such a way that the energy is like really fun and enthusiastic and sincere. So for you as cast to, to step in, how clear were you about what he was trying to do and what you wanted to do with it? I mean, this was, this was so right up my alley because like, we, we vibed out really hard because I, you know, I made a movie called MacGruber, which is a very similar tone in terms of like, it's not winking at like anything. It's really, you don't know, I wasn't right. I, that was me fishing, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I went fishing and I caught a couple fish. The director of MacGruber, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, <laughs> And, no, but honestly, the like, other greatest movie of all time. We, but like we vibed out super hard. Just like like he he was. It's it's a very similar tone. Uh, we clearly like the same things. I mean, like what like what what is the impetus for for the tone in particular of the not winking and and how sincere it is? Because it's a super sincere. Yeah. And the fact that you're from Sweden, I was like, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you know, I wanted to seem like. The writer, um, I didn't want, want it to be like too self-aware, so I wanted to be like, the writer is really stupid, but he thinks that this is the coolest thing in the world, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the tone I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely got that when I received the script and it was all, fuck you, can't you? It was just, <laughs> fuck yeah, like, oh, that's right up my alley. <laughs> Good writing. Um, in terms of putting it together, it is, it's really sophisticated, and I think there's, there's a lovely feel to it. It really works on an effects level, and the world that you create is so much fun. Um, had you done stuff before this to rev up to this? Um, you know, the short test was one thing, but to see the whole thing put together, you really pulled it off with aplomb. Um, well, I had worked as a visual effects artist for many years, and prior to releasing the trailer, I had worked for a very long time as a director for music videos and commercials, and my idea was, you know, 
if I do enough commercials and music videos, then maybe I can do a movie someday. But that n never happened. It just got more and more work. So I got to a point where I just quit doing that and just I, I need to do my own thing. And the first thing was, you know, Kung Fury. And I'm, <laughs> I'm completely blown by how well it went, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's another part of this that I find fascinating is we live in an age now where, you know, it used to be that if something was theatrical, it would be a big deal, or if it was on TV, it was a big deal. And really, at this point, content is, it will find a way to reach its audience if it's the right thing. And, and the audience found you, and you found the audience. And so are you gratified with the way it has gone around the world? And have you been excited to see how people have responded to it in, in other places? Yeah, I mean... I was so blown away by the fact that nobody knew who I was, but they were still willing to support and give me money, essentially. And that was the most surprising thing to me. Like, I, I, I really believed in the project, but I was still very hesitant because nobody knew who I was or anything. So that was the thing that shocked me the most. You know, when we released a Kickstarter, like after 24 hours, <laughs> we we reach our goal of two hundred thousand dollars. Amazing, and it yeah it's it's insane. So um, yeah, <laughs> and now I'm here it's at Comic Con. You know, it's <laughs> sorry. So let's talk about your cast a little bit. Okay, so uh, this is not uh, the Thor that we necessarily know from the last few years, but. A great Thor. Um, yeah. Can you talk about finding your cast? So I was browsing Reddit, and I saw <laughs> <laughs> I saw an image of Andreas. He had posted like a selfie, and I was like, I was I was searching for a bodybuilder with like a really big beard, but that was really hard because most for some reason most bodybuilders don't have any body hair. But I saw Andreas, and I was like, man, he's perfect, <laughs> you know? And so I, I, I figured out who he was, and I figured out his email, and I emailed him. And um, yeah, he was really excited just from the get And this was before the Kickstarter, so it was like, yeah, why did you <laughs> say yes to this? It was like, uh, I sent you an email, and like I waited like two weeks I think and then you responded and you were very you thought it was sounded cool I guess <laughs> well, what, <laughs> what was your experience uh, I flew over it was an incredible journey to board and it's an incredible journey to travel on I told David early on, because I was crazy enough to believe this, I said, this will become a cult classic. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what did you have to show them when you got ready to start shooting? Because so much of this is put together in, in post, and so much of this depends on the final rendering of it. So what did you show them? What were you able to convey to them about the world that you were creating? Well, Andreas, I didn't, at that time, I didn't have anything to show him. I just, I just sent him a voiceover clip of Thor I had recorded with a guy, the guy who plays the police chief. Okay. He had recorded some Thor lines, so that was the only, like, cool thing <laughs> that I could show at the time. Uh, but I guess, you know, I was super passionate about it, and I, I, I really wanted him to do it, so... I worked on that email for a really long time to, you know, sell it in in a good way. So I think, yeah, it worked. And then uh, wait, wait, how'd you get Eleni to do it? Well, oh yeah, uh, I was like, <laughs> how did you convince her? <laughs> <laughs> I said to her, you would be a really good Barbariana, and she was like, no, I can't. <laughs> And then we put on the costume, 
and I was like, man, this is awesome. <laughs> but she, she was still like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. What changed I've your mind? I don't know if I have changed my mind. <laughs> 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 Let's, let's actually, let's bring out, now that he's, now that the technical difficulties have been settled, let's bring out Leopold Nilsson, Hacker Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this... By the way, just can I just say real quick, like, me and Seth have been on a couple of these panels before. This is the best one I will ever be on. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, look what's happening up here. It's the best! <laughs> All right. um, so, in terms of, uh, then, once you put it together and you released it, did you expect for things to, to happen as quickly as they did in terms of it blowing up? Because it was everywhere. It felt like almost overnight. Uh... I hoped it would be big, but you know, I was really nervous when I pos posted the trailer, and it, nothing happened within the first like five hours, and I was so depressed because I had worked on this for like two years and nothing happened. <laughs> so I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I you know, I was so broke. I had I had already sold my couch, my TV, just to be able to work on this, and I was like, "Man." I was living at my mom, and she was like, you gotta get a job, David. <laughs> uh, and I was like, yeah, I, I probably will need to get a job. But then one of the cinematographers, Jonas, came into the office, and I was sitting there, I was so depressed, I was like, fuck, this didn't work. <laughs> my, my whole plan was to post it on Reddit, but m the link that I posted didn't like, took it didn't take off. So I was like, damn, that was my only plan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then he was like, no, it's gonna, it's gonna work itself out. Don't worry about it. I was like, you're an asshole. <laughs> uh, but then I was browsing Reddit like a few hours later and I saw the link to the trailer and I was like, oh, there, there's the damn trailer again. But then I realized it was like on the second page, and then like 20 minutes later it was on front page, and it, after that it just exploded all over the internet, and yeah, it was insane. I think there's a huge difference between uh, somebody who's in a cynical way trying to take advantage of nostalgia and the things that we all kind of collectively remember, and then somebody who is genuinely digested it and it is, it's part of your DNA and it is clear that this was not a calculated commercial, I'm going to do this because it will get me more work and jobs. You could have never predicted what this thing would turn into. Yeah. Um, so for you, the, the joy of it now, when you run into people who have seen the film, uh, what is the excitement of, have you had people walk up to you and just be thrilled that, that you're here and that they get to meet you guys and that you're, you're actually tangible and they can meet Thor and... Yeah, it's... It's amazing. Like I met like seven Kung Furies just here at Comic Con. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very strange situation to be in, but it's it's awesome. I mean, it's uh, way over anything I could ever <laughs> have imagined, uh, and it's just you know really really cool. Um, well, I want to make sure that you guys have a chance to to ask some questions as well, um, and I I can't believe. We filled this room, and thank you so much, guys, for being here. So, uh, so yeah, let's, let's get you guys started. I guess uh, we're going to do it from right here in the middle. Excellent. Uh, be just a moment before they bring that up. Hello? Oh, there it is. There we go. <laughs> Um, first, I want to say hi, David. Hi. Uh, I love the film. <laughs> <laughs> nice costume. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so first, I want to ask, just with the whole fandom just blowing up, as you guys were saying, is there anything in specific you're surprised to see, like from cosplay to fan art? And that's from each of you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm surprised every day when I see new artwork being created by incredibly 
talented people. You know, it's um, very, <laughs> very surreal. Just, just meeting someone dressed up as a character that you created, and while you created it, it was like you didn't have any money, so just put together something that was kind of really cheap. <laughs> and now <laughs> people are trying to emulate that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very strange thing, but it's awesome, you know? So yeah, it's, it's just awesome. <laughs> I, I will say that I'm pretty offended that more people aren't dressing up like Hitler. <laughs> I, <laughs> seems like, why not? Why wouldn't you? A great character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, okay, so next up. Hi, my question is, uh, you know, the movie was about the 80s. Are you planning on doing any other films about maybe the, eight, as the 70s or 90s? Are you a fan of those eras too? Um, I want to do all kinds of different movies. This just happened to be my first project, and it's set in the 80s, but, you know, I love movies and I would love to do all kinds of different genres and settings and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I love movies. <laughs> <laughs> now, has, has this opened that door for you, David? Are you starting to meet people who have seen Kung Fury who are excited about finding things that they can do with you? Yeah, like, I've been getting lots of scripts and different things, but mostly now it's been my focus as mainly been finishing the short, and now it's all about making the feature film. Yeah! yeah. All right. Uh, yes. All right, so watching the movie, uh, it was pretty evident you weren't afraid to take on some pretty ridiculous things, like Triceracop and hacking <laughs> the bullets out of Kung Fury. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, in the initial script, were there any ideas that you thought were like too ridiculous to put in? Or <laughs> did you just kind of go for whatever? You know, I tried to have a backstory for every character and sort of make it sense of the craziness. The only thing that I felt like, okay, this does not make any sense whatsoever, but I thought it was so funny, and that's Triceracop. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is actually one Triceracop costume here in the audience. Really? Yes, really? please stand up. Woo! I like that the answer to that question was no. There was no <laughs> idea that he didn't just put right in there. <laughs> So, since you made the film and it's a global phenomenon, what's the craziest Hollywood story you have now that you've gone through it? Uh, I'm meeting Steven Spielberg on Monday. That's pretty much the crazy. <laughs> Didn't expect that. <laughs> Follow your dreams, guys. <laughs> Anybody can do it. Anybody can meet Steven Spielberg. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Good evening, guys. Um, I, I get, um, I, I'm from Puerto Rico, and uh, it's funny. Uh, it's, uh, he was saying that he he clicked and the upload, and uh, because I I was like the 2,000 person to watch the video. I don't know how I uh, I get it for for uh, in in Facebook, and I. Uh, it's, it was reached the whole other part of the world in, in the Caribbean, you know, it's, uh, and I, I just say that you have to pursue your dreams. I just sell, sold everything that I had in the, in the island to come here to make, I am an actor, writer, and um, the thing is that you're telling about uh, people getting involved in, in, in your projects. I, I would love to like to, to do a Spanish version, like the dubbing. I have oh, yeah. a crew of people. I, I wor I'm, I'm a working actor, thanks God. Your Thor is the best Thor ever. Chris Hemsworth suck. You are Thor. You are Thor. The question, the question is, how do you 
from Switzerland that you're you're from, right? Sweden. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's it's my English. It's and it's not very good. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you are coming from from the um, Europe, and how do you reach and and and, and find these talented people like like uh, Jorma and uh, Andrea, Eleni, and the Huff? How how do you make that happen? Um, well, Leopold is my one of my best friends. He's a really cool dude. And um, I asked him if he wanted to play Hacker Man. <laughs> like, Leopold is really actually beautiful in real life. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's like a male model, model. He's modeled for H&M and like Marc Jacobs and stuff. Uh, but I thought it would kind of find it to make him <laughs> really ugly <laughs> for once. Uh, I, uh, I actually asked, like, just yesterday, like, uh, how come you asked me? Um, because I didn't know, like, <laughs> and he was just, uh, I knew you had a slight lisp. <laughs> it was very honoring. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the best of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really hard at first gathering the people. I searched for uh, several months to find the right Thor. And <laughs> he's here. And um, yeah. Really glad that he jumped on board. And with. With Jorma, he, like, we are, you know, the first time we met them is like, it felt like meeting an old friend, you know? It's like, it just fit in the, it's like a, how do you say, like a hand in, hand in a glove. <laughs> you want to put your hand up my butt? <laughs> That's what it looked like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like with the half, I mean, he's such an A's geek. Uh, <laughs> when I first met him, he was wearing the Knight Rider jacket. Oh my god! Awesome. <laughs> the only thing he talked about was Knight Rider. <laughs> <laughs> and oh damn, I'm so bummed he couldn't be here. But like, he's such a cool dude, and you know. He just, he told me that he watched like 10 seconds of the trailer and then he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, I don't know how, I, I'm, I'm still like surprised how it all came together, but you know. I, I do think when you make something that feels as pure as Kung Fury and, and it's clearly done out of love and it's done really well, people show up, you know, and like, and people, people show up for a lot of things lesser than that. Like anything that you're working on, like, like friends, family, everybody shows up when you, when you produce something and it's just important to make things and keep making them honestly. But people, people love being involved in projects and this is a really cool project. I didn't see anything more than the trailer and was like anything you need. Like anything that, that he wants, like I mean, credit, like from the trailer, you can tell like this dude knows comedy timing, he knows production, he knows like like these are really funny jokes, so sort of thing. But like, but you see something like that, and you're just like, yeah, like you want to get in, involved. And also, so passion is is infectious, and you can sense from watching two seconds of the trailer that there's passion behind it, which I think is key because mm -hmm. you heard David say he sold his possessions, he moved in with his mother to make this movie, and. You know, when you have someone who shows a willingness to put it all on the line just because they believe in something so much, you get swept up in that. Yeah, and even, even though he lied about all of that, yeah. none of that. <laughs> <laughs> He's extremely wealthy. Don't be fooled. Next up, yes. One thing I always uh, speak with my IT friends is that when technology, when hacking is depicted in big productions, clearly Hollywood doesn't have any idea how technology works. Yeah. And since uh, Trinity in Matrix, Hacker Man is the best hacker ever made <laughs> into, into a movie. Total. I mean, 
he actually inputs commands into a terminal. And I, I wanted to ask, uh, what's like your inspiration for, for Hackerman? And what's, is it totally your idea, David? Or Leopold brought something a, a lot into it? How Hackerman came into being? Well, I love 80s technology. I just love the aesthetic of it. And also, um, I watched some CSI. <laughs> 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 I was like, I, I, it would be funny to take this to an, another level, you know? <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was basically the inspiration for it. <laughs> yes. Um, so, one of the first videos I saw um, right after Kung Fury was Hackerman's uh, How to Hack Time tutorial. <laughs> and, in the, and in it, uh, he said he was hacking back a, a three and a half inch floppy disk drive. But what I noticed is that I think it was actually a five inch <laughs> floppy drive. <laughs> so, my question here is. Um, for hacking back time, is it essential to lie about the size of your project? <laughs> is there a prize for the best question? <laughs> like that, that At Comic Con, won? not just the panel. That's the <laughs> they actually both work. Uh, <laughs> No, that's, that's actually uh, like a very blatant writing mistake. Like, uh, I, I just don't know the, like, the American measurement system. I didn't... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just didn't, I just didn't know <laughs> when we wrote it. So... Uh, thank you. <laughs> and a very good answer. <laughs> Um, the role of Kung Fury obviously required a lot of um, master of the martial arts expertise. <laughs> so my question to uh, Mr. Sandberg is that um, when you were doing like a bunch of the stunts, were, have you done stunts before? Have you learned any professional work? Or were you just doing amateur makeup through the film? Um, actually, the first thing I did was you know, I had this idea about dinosaurs and cops and, you know, whatnot. And I, <laughs> the first thing I did was I put a piece of paper and I wrote down a bunch of cool words, like <laughs> volcano, like justice force, like just <laughs> stuff that I thought sounded cool. <laughs> uh, and one of the words was kung fu, and another one was fury. And then it just, like, clicked. <laughs> kung fury. Uh, but, you know, I was like, this I have to do, but I don't know Kung Fu, <laughs> but, like, I have to do this, you know? <laughs> um, so what we did, uh, we brought in a stunt double, and actually, Eos, he's sitting right there. He's the guy who, he's a stunt coordinator. Give him a big hand. And he actually plays Red Ninja. Yeah, he's the Red Ninja too. Oh. <laughs> he's doing a stunt now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah! So it was like the title is so awesome, I gotta figure out a way how to solve this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> This is obviously the greatest movie of 2015. I think everybody can agree on that, right? <laughs> so, so, I just want to take a vote from everybody on stage, how they think about this, is Triceracops specifically aiming for their junk, or does the bullet just <laughs> magically find its way there? <laughs> uh, Triceracop was top Dick shot at Academy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> so he's aiming for it. <laughs> Thank you. It's just so effective. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I, I really love the short. Uh, I couldn't share it with my friends fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious if you guys had considered or have been approached about action figures. It fits so well with the 80s theme. Uh, you know, I mean, if I had a G.I. Joe version of Clint Fury, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. If I had a Stretch Armstrong-style Armstrong Thor or something like that, WWE-style old school. Cool. Yeah, uh, we have been approached by different companies, and uh, it's something that we definitely want to do. Like, if I could have an action figure of myself, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm done, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's something we are looking into currently. It'd be good funding for the movie. Yeah. So one of my favorite parts of the movie was the animation sequence when you like were super dead. <laughs> and um, I was wondering if you guys were ever considering doing a comic of Kung Fury. Yeah. Considering yeah. you're at Comic-Con. We are. And um, confirmed, right? It's confirmed, yeah. Confirmed, gotcha. confirmed, yeah. yeah. Dropping news bombs left and right during the panel today. It's Henry here in the audience? Henry? Henry? Henry! That's Henry, and he's doing the, he's Hi, working on the comic book as we speak, and he's yeah! incredibly talented. Well, the, the question that I have about the, uh, the feature is, as you, as you start to work on this, obviously now you've had the reaction from fans, you've seen the movie play, you've heard feedback. Um, the, the first thing came out of such a pure place and you were, you were kind of off doing your own thing. Is it hard now to refocus on it or is it something that there were ideas that you already had that you knew you wanted to do and this is now just a chance to go back in and do all the things that you couldn't the first time? Totally, like I had so many ideas that I wanted to fit into these 30 minutes, but um, it was like, it didn't work. So a lot of the ideas that I had, we now have a chance to work within the feature and uh, we're able to do it in a way, you know, that I think is, you know, better and bigger and you know, I'm so excited to keep working on this. And a lot of people, or basically the entire crew who has worked on this, is like kind of bummed now that it's over. They just want to keep working on it because it's, it's been so much fun for everyone. Like from the prop guys to the, to, uh, the cinematographers to like the visual effects guys, everyone just want to keep working on it. It's like a, you know, it's like, like a sandbox. You're just having so much fun. So, yeah. For the feature, <laughs> for the feature, did you go back to the original list that was yeah, like, I volcano? <laughs> 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 and you're like, ah, what else, lasers? <laughs> <laughs> no, that list is gone, but uh, I had so many ideas like, you know, Confury in the future and stuff like that, like a future that it's kind of like, how people in the 80s envisioned the future and you know stuff like that. It's so much fun to work, you know. It's awesome. I think we have time for a couple more. All right. Yes. So since I was young, my uh, my favorite movie is and always has been Top Gun, but Kung Fury is the only movie to ever make me reconsider that. But anyway, <laughs> my question is. Um, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's looking to get into voice acting or just acting in general? <clears throat> Ooh, uh, that's a tough question. I mean, I'm not really into acting. I'm, I want to direct more, but Norma or do you, Seth or someone? Uh, I mean, Doing it yourself is not a bad way to do it. You don't have to wait for anybody, honestly. Like, I mean, I think this, uh, David's a real testament to, to just getting up, getting a camera, doing. I mean, you know, obviously he's worked as a professional before any of this, but like, but you got to start somewhere. It's it's not, it's it's a good way to to just get it on your feet and 
try things out, you know? Like, if you have friends who are doing, I mean, that's what, what me and Andy and Akiva did in our Lonely Island stuff. We just sort of put ourselves in things. So mm. I, that would be my advice. I mean, like, as you wait for, you know, the agent and all that sort of stuff, just don't wait for anybody. Like, like that'll come if, if, you know, I don't know. Do it. Yeah. It's right. shitty advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last one. Um, hello. I'm from Dallas, and we have been watching you guys so closely since you posted your first you know, video a long time ago, and I've worked for a studio at that time, and I was like, we had the biggest green screen from Dallas to LA, or from California to LA in Dallas, and I was like begging my boss to get you guys in there. Sadly, the studio closed, um, but um, James from the Alamo Draft House, I think you have talked to him a few times, um, loves you guys, and we have been in the film, you know, in the baby film industry, independent films for a while, and we had kind of started to give up hope a little bit with our website, and when, um, you guys had David Hasselhoff come and do the whole amazing song. We were just like, you know what? This guy is going to make it, and it's going to be amazing. So we actually ripped apart everything that we had done the last five years and to completely rebuilt it. And um, now we're Nerd Ninja, and our logo resembles you guys a little bit. And I think that um, I just want to thank you guys for really oh, wow. showing us that you've come from nothing and just built yourselves up into the coolest motherfuckers ever. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Um, I, I would say that it, the, one of the things that really struck me when I saw it is that, you know, nostalgia comes in many packages now, but there is something special about the 80s, and there is something special about the, the fondness people have for the 80s that they, they simply don't let go of. I, I don't think there's any other era that people are as fond of the aesthetics and the details and the toys and the power gloves and the... And I, I don't know what it is about it, but your, your film speaks so directly to that, and, uh, and it really does feel like you have tapped something that I think a lot of people have tried to tap, and we've seen people try to do this kind of thing before. But it comes from a really pure place in your film. And, uh, you know, as an 80s kid yourself, um, looking, at, looking at the final thing, does it, it feels like an artifact from the 80s, not like you're doing the 80s. Yeah. Um, and how hard is that to pull off in the details and in the costuming and the everything else to, to keep it that authentic and real? You know, for me, it was only, like, um, I was really into the new retro wave scene and I was listening to the music and I thought like these people are gonna really dig this. Um, I'm doing this because I think it's cool but I didn't expect you know the massive response I guess it has to do with nostalgia and you know for me it was just like I love the 80s so much that I wanted to like sum up it in like one short film that was the original goal and yeah, it got an incredible response, and uh, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> it's really cool. Thanks. <laughs> I, I think that's, that's the perfect summation of it. Um, guys, one more hand for the cast and the crew of the amazing Kung Fury. Everybody have a great Comic Con. Yes, for sure. For sure.